Hello, 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 Facebook family, wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Instagram family. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to another edition of Anoki Uncensored Live. I'm your host, Raj Gurn, the founder of the umbrella brand, Anoki Life. With mental health being front row and center after Meghan Markle's interview with Oprah, which aired a week ago and caused a whole, you know, flurry of, you know, discussion and narrative and opinions and perspectives around how important mental health is, I decided to dedicate this particular episode to strategies to combat mental health that work. I have two guests. This one is a real special one for me. I have two incredible guests who will be breaking it down from their own perspectives because I wanted to give you guys a you know variety of ways in which you can decompress if you are going through you know high stress situations as a lot of us are and i also wanted you guys to just find happiness in the chaos that is our world today you know i know that you guys can relate to that um, i definitely can and conversations that i have with people in my inner circle my intimate circle my friend circle the professional arena, everyone's having the same kind of, you know, huge ups and downs because of everything that we're being affected with. So with that said, I just want to let you guys know that um, right now for about 30 minutes, I'm going to be bringing on yoga and meditation teacher, Rima Sarin. Um, she will be breaking down the concepts of yoga and meditation and how they can be incorporated into elevating our mental health um, and she's going to be ending things off um, with a five minute guided meditation, which I'm just really, really super psyched about. You guys know that I'm a huge, huge meditation practitioner. I really believe in the power of meditation to kind of really elevate and change everything to be able to, you know, remove the toxins from within us, the layers of those, those that we're conscious of and those that are subconsciously kind of, you know, really inbred into our persona. Um, I don't know if you guys believe in this or not, but whether it's from lifetimes, I believe in this, you know, lifetimes of trauma that we carry around, the, you know, the trauma and the heavy um, energy that we carry around that doesn't serve us in this lifetime. Guided meditation is a great way to deal with that. So, you know, I will be bringing her on in a moment. And then at 7.30, I have the fabulous founder of Masala Bhangra, my good friend of over 20 years, actually, Serena Jen will be joining us. And she, you know, this is when we'll be kind of switching gears and we'll be talking about mental health um, tips and ways in which we can kind of decompress using fitness, um, health and dance. So that's going to be really, really exciting. So to kick things off, folks, now that you've all gotten yourselves in here, I want to, um, again, thank you so much to our Instagram family and also to our Facebook family for joining us today. I'm going to be bringing in um, the fabulous Rima. So Rima, if you can uh, give me an invite to Instagram. Okay, folks. I am going to give you a quick introduction of this fabulous lady before we get um, kicking off, just because I want to give you guys a little bit of context around who she is and why I'm really excited about having this conversation with her. So Rima um, is an avid practitioner of yoga and has been since 2004. Um, she's been a certified yoga teacher since 2012, having attained her teaching diploma and postgraduate certification from Anna Malai University in India and is about to complete her master's degree. I mean, this lady just really, really loves to educate herself. And I love <laughs> people like that. Um, so she is um, getting close to closing out and completing her master's degree in yoga from the university, um, their campus here in Canada. So that's really exciting. Um, she has extensive teaching experience um, her specialism is Hatha yoga, 
chair yoga and mindful meditation techniques. She's based um, out of um, Canada and she's currently adapting her teachings to best apply to the corporate sector, as well as those looking to establish a consistent home practice. Welcome, 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 my dear Rima. Thank you so much for tuning in and just to you know share your words of wisdom and your thoughts around your specialism. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Raj, for having me this evening. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Well, I want to just get right into it by um, perhaps addressing a few very basic questions first, just for those people who aren't very familiar with actually what yoga is or meditation is, let's kind of just really, you know, give a definition that would make sense to them based on your experiences. So my first question for you is, what is yoga? <laughs> <laughs> so yoga and meditation are the two major limbs of the yoga holistic practice. And uh, yoga itself uh, consists of physical movements. So asanas, like uh, we, we call it. And when you're doing those physical movements, you make sure that you're synchronizing with your breath. So any movement that you do, you synchronize with the inhalation and exhalation. And, you know, that synchronization and that beauty about yoga is, 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 is phenomenal. What it does is it releases tension in your body. It improves flexibility. And there's a flow of energy that flows in your body, which actually, you know, it releases the tension at a deeper level, the cellular level, at the ligament level, making sure, you know, every single muscle and it massages your organs as well. So yoga is basically primarily consist of the physical aspect of it. And what meditation is that you, it, it's a restorative um, uh, mechanism or a technique that you use. So they both are basically tools and we are who we are because of the tools that we use. It's not because of how fantastic we are. We human beings have this dominant place on this planet uh, because of the tools that we use. So, you know, so what we use yoga and meditation for is primarily, um, you know, having the um, ability to use those tools to improve our mental and our physical health. Right. And, you know, so it's really interesting because it sounds like it's so simple, but there are so many forms of yoga and so many forms of meditation. I'd love for you to maybe, you know, tell us a couple of the more common yogas that um, people utilize, uh, especially mm -hmm. here in the West. And if you feel that they are the ones that we should be utilizing, or if you feel through your learning um, mm -hmm. that there are other versions that you feel maybe better for us to deal with mental health. Like so, to, yeah. So yoga, um, so just basic stretches. So any, you know, a form of a stretching technique that you can use, you can do it at your desk. Um, you know, as you, you know, you stretch, you inhale, as you unravel from it, you exhale. So just do the basic stretches. And then after you've done the basic stretches, you sit, sit in stillness. So what um, meditation is primarily is, that you first become mindful. So the technique that you know I really teach is the mindful meditation technique where you use your breath as your anchor. So you stay with the full duration of your inhalation and the full duration of your exhalation. I sometimes like to share the technique of a boat that's anchored on a shore. You are the boat and the breath is the anchor. So the boat is drifting away but the breath, which is the anchor, it's bringing you back. So you drift away with your thoughts and your breath brings you back when you concentrate on it. So a thousand times, you know, the thoughts will come and a thousand times you go back to the breathing. So when you sit in stillness, so you be mindful. So I'm just going to take a second to just share what mindfulness is. Yes. Mindfulness is the uh, direct friendly awareness to the way things are in a given moment without you having been caught up in to these automatic tendencies to change it or make it something else. So when you sit in meditation, you first just accept what are the feelings, what are the thoughts, what are the body sensations you're going through, and you just accept them. And then you sit in stillness, which is, to, which is a state of rest and restoration. Physically, mentally, emotionally, your mind becomes calm, it becomes relaxed, increases your awareness as you're in that restful state. You can respond to situations really well. You know, they're actually providing so many benefits in the corporate 
corporate world as well. New strengths are coming into the corporate world and also in your personal life because you're taking that time, that nourishing time for yourself to sit in stillness. So by taking time for yourself and st sitting in stillness, you're actually becoming more aware and awake of yourselves, better in tuned with yourself. You can actually become better problem solvers. You know, you can enhance your in, uh, emotional uh, intelligence and all the aspects that are instrumental for your day-to-day -day life. So as you sit in meditation, you get a chance to witness your thoughts. And a lot of people say, oh, you know, I can't get rid of thoughts. Well, you have to be dead if you have to get rid of thoughts. The key is when thoughts are coming and you're sitting in stillness, what exactly are you doing with those thoughts? So they could be negative thoughts, they could be positive thoughts, they could be insightful thoughts, perhaps you need them to do some problem solving, or perhaps they're experiential thoughts, perhaps you have a task in hand that you wanna address and those thoughts are coming. So the key is for you to just acknowledge those thoughts, don't entertain them, and then just go back to your breathing. And then when you sit in mindful meditation breathing, I always say the you need to, breathe from the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is this area just in between the thorax or your thoracic cavity where your heart and your lungs reside and your abdomen. So, you know, you use the belly breathing as you inhale, your belly rises. And as you exhale, your belly drops back. You bring your focus and attention to the breathing. You know, thousand times thoughts will come and you just acknowledge them and then you just go back to your breathing. I love that you said that you just acknowledge them because, you know, oftentimes we fight with them, right? We're like, you know, why are you in my head? I'm trying to, you know, free my mind of all thoughts. And what I'm hearing you say here is that's not the way that you free your mind of thoughts. You acknowledge that they are there and exactly. you, right? So exactly, like, exactly. So, so tell and me a little know, bit about that. You, so, so, you know, thoughts will always be there. We live in this autopilot mode. Uh, we never take the time to witness how busy our mind is. And then we get so caught up into the storytelling that we're made to believe that those thoughts are real, but those thoughts are not real. They're just mental events, but it's our imagination that gets so caught up and makes us believe that those thoughts are real. So as you're sitting in meditation and stillness, taking the time for yourself, reconnecting, retuning with yourself internally, you, you just, you know, thoughts will come one after the other and you just acknowledge them don't judge them don't entertain them and go back to your breathing and even if you get caught up into the thinking process or perhaps the thoughts is your distraction or perhaps there's noise you know perhaps where you are there's noise coming from outside you know you may get caught up into it you're not doing anything wrong by getting caught up into it you just to go come back and tune, uh, tune into your breath again so anytime there's a distraction with the thinking you acknowledge it you don't entertain it and then just come back to the breathing so you're really using your breath as a tool to ground you to anchor you right i love that so for those people who aren't initiated around yoga mindfulness meditation what would you suggest to them um, be kind of their entry point like which one of those should they do first? Should they do them together? Like give us some ideas around that. Mm -hmm. So if you're sitting, um, if you're sitting um, at your desk or perhaps you know on the floor, you can do just little stretches. You know, you can some uh, you know concentrate on the upper body, so stretches on the upper body, and just make sure that there's pranas or the energy flowing in your body, there's tension being released in your body, and then once you've done just light stretches where you're synchronizing your breathing as you're stretching, make yeah. sure. So the key is not you know how you know how much of a stretching you're doing. Are you able to reach for that toe this morning? But no, that's not what should be the focus. The focus should be for you to synchronize your breath as you're stretching. So just do light stretches and then sit in stillness. And what I say is, you know, for your preparatory steps uh, that you want to use for, you know, going into the guided meditation session is that you just come at the edge of the seat, um, just, you know, sit at the edge of the seat, making your, sure, sure your spine is erect. If you're sitting on the floor, you can do that as well. And there's less pressure on your abdominal organs because when you're sitting in an upper right position. Um, there's a copious amount of blood flow that goes into your, you know, base of your spinal cord. And it's just a start of a good work. So you bring your focus and awareness 
to the, 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 the breath as you're sitting in. Your hands are probably uh, placed, uh, li li lightly placed on your uh, thighs, palms facing up, palm, uh, palms facing down, and you know, shoulders are away from your ears, and you're just sitting in stillness and just focus on the breathing. So as you inhale, your belly rises. As you exhale, your belly drops back. You stay with the rhythm of the breath and, and just feel the calmness and the peace dawn upon you. And why do you feel that you know yoga, meditation, um, these practices are a good way to um, you know, kind of de- compose even for people who are in a high stress situations especially around you know a lot of the things that we're facing today in the external environment that we can't control which causes anxiety it causes you know i mean uh, there's so much talk about you know what's going on from a mental health perspective you know how from your experience from your education your expertise are these connected you know how can these be used from a mental health awareness perspective so so raj our mental and physical health is very intertwined so i back in 2004 i'm just going to share a personal story here back yes. in 2004 i had the stresses of raising you know a young family like personal life and corporate career and i believed that my body and mind were two separate entities but in actuality they're so connected and intertwined with each other when there is mental distress, it percolates into a disbalance, discomfort, and disease in the body. So I was having these symptoms at the time where there was no medical explanation for this. And my family doctor at the time shared a personal story with me that resonated so deeply. And what he mentioned to me was, if I could get introduced to yoga and meditation, I, I can be, you know, I. I can be looking for some answers and some solutions for some of the symptoms that I was experiencing. I was very lucky enough to find somebody that had done his yoga and uh, meditation teaching practice from Haridwar in India. Wow. And after doing maybe seven or 10 sessions, all of my symptoms completely evaporated. And from wow. there on, there was no looking back for me. So the yoga and the, the, the meditation aspect of it is you're taking care of your, yourself from a physical as well as a mental level. So when you're doing the physical postures, you're actually releasing the tension from a physical standpoint. Mm -hmm. And then when you're doing the meditation, you're actually releasing the tension from a mental standpoint, you're taking care of the brain fog that you have, you know, all of the autopilot mode that you're in, that, you know, sometimes you don't have the capacity to make the right decisions in life. You don't have the clarity of choice of freedom. When you sit in stillness, you take that nourishing time for yourself and you give yourself those positive energy to open up these sources of strength and healing, you know, for yourself. And that reaps the benefits. Absolutely. And do you recommend that um, for anyone that, you know, isn't a regular practitioner, um, that they seek the, um, I guess, the expertise of someone that is a certified yoga and or meditation practitioner? Like, what are your thoughts around that? Sure. Um, you know, if they can uh, find somebody that can just do some, you know, some sessions with them, just to introduce to, to, to them whether med uh, yoga and meditation is going to be for them. But, you know, you don't have to necessarily um, seek for that. You can start your practice starting today. Like we all can do stretches. We inhale, we raise our hands up and we exhale, we bring our hands down. We can do some circular motions, you know, with our, with our shoulders. So do just basing stretching and just, you know, sit in calmness. So what I say is, and maybe I can demonstrate like a five minute breathing uh, technique, what, you know, people can follow anytime, any day, and just reconnect with them. So all they need is just their breath. Okay. So, um, so I can I can do that if you like, and just provide everybody with uh, with with a segment of you know what that practice looks like, so that they can pursue it on their own. I would absolutely love that. As we close out um, in a short while, let's mm -hmm. definitely go. Uh, let's definitely go into that and get people kind of framed up in knowing how to um, practice it. And it's really interesting because, you know, um, 
you don't have to be someone that, you know, meditates for an hour a day, right? And I know that this is something that you're going to, um, you know, show us how to do because you're going to show us that, you know, you could meditate for five minutes a day and it could make a difference to your health, whether it be physical, whether it be emotional, spiritual, right? Am I right absolutely. when I say that? Ab absolutely. So you could be doing it sitting at your desk as you're working, you could actually be doing meditation as you're warming up your lunch, standing next to the microwave. All you need to do is you just bring your focus and awareness to the breathing. And that's what it helps you in just calming yourself down. And it provides the clarity and it provides, you know, the, the, uh, the awareness, you know, and then you can respond to situations skillfully and gracefully when you do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, all you need to do is just focus on the breath. You just need to use that to anchor yourself and ground yourself and use your breath as, as that tool that's so readily available to you. And you can do it anytime. Um, you know, there's a three minute breathing space technique that I talk about where, you know, for it's, it's a three-step process where the first step is you just tap into yourself and you say, you know, what are my thoughts? What are my emotions right now? What are, are there any bodily sensations do I have? And whatever you're experiencing from an emotional standpoint or whatever the experience that you're having, you just accept it the way it is without having that natural tendency to change it or judge it. So that's the first mm -hmm. step that you do. The second step is you bring your awareness to your breathing. So you stay with the breath, the full duration of your inhalation, the full duration of your exhalation, and ride with the waves of your breath. As the breath is going, you cascade through the breath as it, you know, and see the belly movement. And it doesn't have to be really the, the belly movement, wherever the sensations of the breath are most vivid for you. Perhaps it's in your chest area. As you inhale, your chest rises. As you exhale, your chest drops back. Or perhaps it's in your nostrils as you take the cold air in and you take the warm air out. So wherever the sensations of the breath are most vivid, you just tap Tap into your awareness into that. And then the third step of that three minute breathing space is that bring that focus and awareness away from the belly or wherever that sensation of the breath is and breathe into the entire body. Mm -hmm. And just stay with like maybe four or five breaths, breathing into the entire body and breathing out of the entire body. And you'll find at the end of that three minute meditation that you've done, you've become a change person. You can, wow. you, you know, yeah, it, it just changes the dynamics. You know, as somebody that is a meditation um, practitioner myself, I wholeheartedly support every single thing that Bhima is talking about here. Uh, meditation completely changed my life, um, you know, from the traumas and the expectations and the pressures that, you know, women, women of, you know, minority, um, you know, cultures, definitely the South Asian culture, there's just a lot of pressure that's put on us as, you know, as daughters, as wives, as mothers, and now, you know, working in the workforce and dealing with, you know, two, two cultures that we live in, and the multiple generations and how our kids are different um, to, you know, the expectations that our parents have. These are a lot of things that kind of weigh on us as women, I know they do with me, um, Rima, you, you've also finished sharing a little bit how, you know, some of these pressures were showing themselves physically, and it wasn't really something that you could help with medications and, you know, with your normal medical way of dealing with it. It had to be something that you dealt with to kind of decompress yourself and how quickly you were able to, through, you know, yoga and breathing practices, really change the way that your body felt. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it sounds like such a magical pill, but it's true. I mean, anyone out there that hasn't gotten into um, meditation, you know, doesn't practice yoga, Honestly, it, it's something that you have to think about. Uh, there's so many different ways of being able to do it. And I know that Rima, um, I'd love for you to share if you know people can get a hold of you, where would they go to get a hold of you? I know that you know, you're focusing on the corporate arena because professionals are very highly strung. There's a lot of pressure on us in that realm as well. But there's also that, you know, home service that you also offer as well, right? Like how can people get a hold of you um, to tap into the knowledge of how to 
you know, do yoga and how to do meditation before we go into our um, close off with you giving us a guided meditation? Okay, so they can uh, reach out to me on my Instagram page, which is Yoga Rima. And, uh, and I'll be happy to respond. And I'm also holding uh, some Zoom classes that I do ever since COVID hit us, because uh, you know, that, that was the realization that dawned upon us that you know, what affects one affects all and how we have this network of mutuality where we're so interconnected with each other. So I started to offer those classes uh, as well. So please feel free to reach out to me on, uh, on Instagram and I'll be happy to respond to you. That is incredible. Um, so, so for you, the best is Instagram. Like there's mm -hmm. not like somewhere they can go sign up for these classes. They would just need to DM you on yes, Instagram. That's right. that's okay. Right. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Perfect. So that's great. So are these classes open to anyone around the world or is it specific areas? Like what's your, what's your intake around there? around the world. I have people coming in from California, even with the three hour difference. I have a couple of people that come from India as well when I'm holding the classes in the morning. So yeah, so, you know, with the, with now, uh, with this COVID, uh, you know, we all are so connected with each other in an unimaginable manner. So, uh, so yeah, absolutely. Anybody is welcome. That's incredible. So let's close out then with a um, few minutes of guided meditation. Take it away, Rima. Okay, thank you. So just uh, wanted to highlight some of the preparatory steps. So when everybody's sitting on the chair, if they can just perhaps come at the edge of the seat, um, when they do that, the, you know, you just come naturally come up in an upright position where your spine is erect, your ears are away from your shoulders, your head is nicely balanced over your shoulders, and your palms can be facing up, facing down, uh, fingers are limp and loose, and you're just, you know, and just Focus on the breathing. Um, your eyes can be closed, but for any reason, if you're uncomfortable closing your eyes, just have a soft gaze on the floor because you don't want to be distracted by the surroundings around you. And um, and uh, I'm going to be ringing this little bell that I have here. And uh, as soon as I ring the bell, we will get into our guided meditation session. Let's do it. Sit in a comfortable position. Focus on the contacts your body is making. Your sit bones firmly planted on the ground or perhaps on the chair that you're sitting. Hands are placed on your lap. Hands are limp and loose. Head and neck is elongated, shoulders are away from your ears. And sit in stillness and be present in the moment. There you are, not going anywhere, not doing anything, just sitting in stillness. Now bring your attention to your lower abdomen, the area that we call the belly. And notice that with each in-breath, your belly rises. And with each out-breath, your belly drops back. Be aware of your breath. Your breath has been moving in and out of your body for years for you to ever notice it. Paying attention to your breathing simply means paying attention, nothing more. It doesn't mean that you have to push or force your breathing or manipulate it or try to make it deeper or change the pattern or the rhythm, just normal steady breaths. You're simply giving yourself the opportunity to simply be. As you come out of a doing mode, allowing your body to be still, as you are in this being mode, sitting in an upright position that embodies a wakefulness, self-reliance, 
self-awareness and patience. Your body is balanced, stable and grounded. Just be mindful of the natural steady breaths, feeling the full duration of your inhalation and the full duration of your exhalation. This is your moment to rest from any line of thoughts. Thoughts will come, you acknowledge them. Don't fight them. And then go back to your breath. Stay with the waves of your breath. Watch your thoughts as they cascade in your mind. Don't suppress them, just acknowledge them. Think of this as giving your mind a rest, allowing this to be a nourishing time for yourself the time that you deserve, time to open up to the sources and strength of healing within yourself. In doing work of this kind, it's important to remember that you're not trying hard to accomplish anything. That just creates tension. Stay with the intention and drop the expectation. Just be aware of each passing moment and accept with whatever is happening within you, looking at it clearly and accepting it. You may feel feelings of boredom or impatience or exhaustion, don't dwell on them. Acknowledge your body and yourself. Accept your body and yourself as they are right now. Now, as we end, we take the focus to your entire body rather than just your breath. Experience yourself sitting, breathing, and being physically present moment to moment. And congratulate yourself for spending this time and energy that you have given yourself allowing the benefits of this practice to extend for the rest of the evening and as this week unfolds. I'm going to be ringing the bell shortly. And then when I do that, I would like everybody to open their eyes very, very, very slowly Wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes very, very slowly, and then come back into the room with us. There goes the bell. Wow, in a word, wow. That was incredible, Rima. You totally need to, you, we totally need to do a class together. I think that you would be absolutely incredible. I'm sure I speak on behalf of everyone out there that um, is joining us. I would like to sincerely thank you for this incredible session that just, you know, the 101 lesson on yoga, mindfulness, meditation, and then just kind of bringing us to this place where we're all in the same place in terms of 
you know, the meditation that you took us through. Thank you so much for that. Anyone out there that would like to solicit um, Rima for their own purposes, please do hit her up on her Instagram. Again, um, Yoga Rima is her Instagram, DM her there. She does classes virtually at different times in the day and everyone around the world is welcome. Thank you so much, Rima. And I, I can't wait to have you back on and we do something else exciting like this. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, guys. Wow. Now, what was that feeling like, hey? Wasn't that tremendous? I feel so elated and ready to hit up my next guest. Yay, there you are on Instagram. How are you, my love? <laughs> I'm amazing. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you okay. I can see your beautiful effervescent energy. I am super, super happy to have you here. And before, <clears throat> before we actually get into everything, I just want to give people a bit of information about you, sweetheart, just to kind of contextualize a little bit of, of why I feel you're so fabulous and then just like, just kick it off from there. Are you cool with that? I'm totally cool with that. Brilliant. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, let's do it. So Serena Jain, she is coined as the Indian Jane Fonda. Um, she's the creator of the original Masala Bhangra dance series. And she is actually this year celebrating her 21st anniversary. So big, you know, props and shout out to her there. And, I, and we will definitely be tapping into kind of the beginning of that journey in a moment. Um, she was the first to bring Indian dance to the US fitness industry and has 15 workout videos under her belt, not to mention that she does classes in over 12 countries around the world. This woman does not sit still. She, <laughs> she is based out of New York. You're still in New York, right, darling? I am, I am. Yes, yes. 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 Um, and, and I say that because we met each other two decades ago in New York and many times thereafter. So I just wanted to see that now that you have the babies, are you still in the city or if I, you popped out? We, we did sort of pop out not too far, uh, Forest Hills, Queens. So That's I mean, not bad I'm, at all. That's bad. nice. Yeah, still That's, close by. That's lovely. So based out of New York, she is a certified fitness instructor, um, having been practicing for three whole decades, as I mentioned to you guys off the top of this conversation, she teaches classes in step aerobics, total body conditioning, and so, so much more. Please officially, officially welcome my girl, Serena Jen, for the first time, I'm actually interviewing her. I mean, that's got to be nuts. Yeah, why, that is Why nuts. has it taken so long? <laughs> why has it taken so long? I it's think, me. It's me, I think. Uh, Raj, you are very busy. You and I both know that. You are very, very busy. But I think... But so uh, are you. So yes, are you. Yes, yes, yes. You're right. No, I think I think uh, back then, you know, I actually I went on live a few hours ago just to say, hey, I'm going to be joining my friend Raj on a Noki vibe. I said a Noki vibe. I'm so sorry. I know that was, you know, past and now it's a Noki uncensored. I'm like, oh my God. I, Are you I kidding it, me, lady? I took I it mean, back. <laughs> girl, you took it back. And just, uh, just think about the power of, um, you know, branding. Cause can I tell you how many people have known us since back then still call us a Noki vibe and we've been a Noki vibe. Then we were a Noki magazine. Then we went into Anoki Media because we started to do events and things. <laughs> um, now we're Anoki Life because we wanted to kind of hone and focus in on the community more. Uh -huh. um, and then we have, you know, this live that we do that then goes into Dash Radio's Ruckus Avenue radio station as our, you know, weekly show. So right, I look right. forward to, um, you just want to give a big shout out to our, you know, Ruckus Avenue radio um, crew as well, because this is airing there as well. And oh, I want to welcome my girl on this show. And I want to just dive right in. I want I want people who don't understand what Masala Bhangra actually is. I want you to tell them what is it and why did you decide that this is what you wanted to do? Oh, wow. OK, so I uh, Masala Bhangra is an Indian dance program, right? Masala in Hindi means spicy. Bhangra is a folk dance in the north part of India. Uh, it's combined with mostly Bhangra, but elements of Bollywood. And I, um, I I started this off, honestly, as like one year and then two years. And then it, it just went on. It just kept going. It, it still feeds my soul. It still provides me so much happiness. And I cannot let go 20 years later. But really, I, I created this um, to honor my father and his existence and to everything he told me to be proud of. 
I lost my father to a massive cardiac arrest. My mom was 40 years old with two children, my sister and I. And for, you know, knock on wood, we were a very strong family, the three of us girls, you know, and I get emotional talking about it because I just can't imagine my mom was 40 years old. How did she manage to, you know, keep moving? But she has showed me that we can still move forward and has honestly indirectly passed on positive energy to my sister and I, because we're constantly thinking, we got this, we can do this and we can move forward and still embrace our emotions in every bit way that we have. So years later, when I was like, I've got to do something to tell my dad, I'm really proud to be Indian and I want you to know that. And I want my own community to get up and start moving because it's essential that we move. South Asians, it is essential that we move. And that's why I just thought of Masala Bhangra because I love Bhangra. And but what's what's amazing, Raj, is when I first met you, it went from this workout, right? Just traditional one hour workout to honestly a lifestyle and a community. Yes. And it's actually brought so many people together. The workshops that I do now, it's not even about I mean, yes, we are physically getting, uh, you know, to work out with one another. We are dancing with each other, but the community that has come together and what they have shared with me as to how it has, um, you know, added so much energy into their lives is mind blowing. And so, of course, I have to keep going. So it's become a lifestyle for people now. and. 20 years later, we've gone virtual. Wow. I, you know, and I talk I, to me about I, that. I do. I, yeah. I, I teach virtual classes. I personally teach virtual classes now. The one virtual class, I don't do as many as more be, just because of the children. Um, but, you know, I have a, a team of instructors around the world that do teach. And I'm just proud of my team that they are keeping their students, you know, fit and sane. And they're offering masala bhangra to their community we are doing our best to stay afloat and stay alive in this virtual land and i just i salute my ambassadors for you know whoever they are to keep going and it's been amazing but i i you know you know I've, you and i have known each other a long time and it's amazing you guys have done stories on me in the past but you and i have never done this before we haven't and we and and you know thanks to the moment I'm here with you at the moment. <laughs> we are, my darling, and 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 I'm I'm so happy and excited because you know, like me, I've been in the game for a long time, and you know, so have you. Like we're like the original OGs that kind of really kick things to that next level to say, hey, hang on a minute, right? You know, as an identity, you know, we need to be you know understood and recognized and showcased for all the multiple talents that we have and all of the wonderful things that we're doing, not just to feed our community, but also to invite and welcome mainstream society into who we are and what we do, right? Because, you know, we're Absolutely. a very inclusive community. The South Asian community is extremely, um, you know, inclusive and we have, you know, everything we do is about community and being communal, right? Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and this is this is why I feel kind of your ode to your father um, for you know fusing your you know passion for fitness as well as the cultural identity of who he was and who we are you know the Bhangra being one of many is so interesting that that's what you decided to do. How do you, like so? Let's talk a little bit about the tactical elements. How do you fuse fitness, dance, mainstream? with you know north indian bhangra like let's talk for anyone who hasn't been a part of your classes can you break some of that down yeah let me let me just walk you through the journey of what you would experience in a class let's right? do it let's do let's it do <laughs> so generally you know when you walk into a masala bhangra class uh you are greeted with a hello from the instructors uh, myself or some of the instructors and then we you know invite everybody and let me just touch on that real quick masala bhangra has been i have been we have been inclusive with diversity and inclusion since the beginning what I love is I started this for the Indian community, but it's actually spiraled really fast to actually the outside community. And, you know, that support has come through and I've been able to grow because people loved it so much. So now it's about people and it's about keeping people fit, not uh, not just my own community, but then some. So when someone walks in, I try to, and I think I've done this successfully so many years later, 
give them a feeling of what it would be like, you know, to be around the Indian culture on a daily basis, what it would be around to attend a wedding, a dinner party, something. So I invite everyone in. Of course, we say namaste. I actually, you know, start you off by doing a move and then I um, stretch you out and then we actually pay homage, right? So we pay homage by, you know, doing all of this just to say thank you very much to this space for allowing us to get up and move. Mm -hmm. And then I take you through a journey of moves. And it's uh, it's like the add on method where we, you know, we take you through a journey of moves. It's not easy, easy to teach by any means you know and when i take you through a journey of moves then we put it all together so you know you're you're you get to also memorize these moves you get to practice it over and over again and then as we go through this journey you know all of a sudden you have this choreography that you've done of course i i share with everyone shout out bale bale because that means <laughs> woohoo and you know i tell everyone pretend you're going to be at the indian wedding and now let's jam and so now that you know the entire routine the, all the moves, let's just jam. So I'll put on like a really popular Bhangra song and we will just jam. And in one hour, it's amazing to me what somebody can learn. And mm -hmm. my biggest, my biggest, uh, you know, achievement is when somebody, you know, walks into a class, has no idea what to expect, but immediately feels the love. And then they walk out feeling, okay, wow, I was able to accomplish that. Even if they were not the best, even if they stood in the back or the front, in the middle, wherever, but they were like, that was amazing. I did it. Yes. And then they come back for more. And that's, that's huge. Wow. So there's, somebody, I, there's somebody here on Instagram, I have to share, uh, is saying <clears throat> masala means spicy and Bhangra is the dance from the north part of India. I love the statement at the beginning of each class. This must be one of your, <laughs> um, one of your pupils, right? I don't know if you can see it there, but it's, I mean, it's a, it's an ode and a testament to supporting the fact that everything that you're saying is in fact, how they feel when they come in there, I, um, sweetheart. I, the, you know, Raj, the, we, I believe we both can say this from the OG perspective, right? We, we believed in what we have to give. We believed in what is it that uh, we want to offer and we kept going and I'm sure, yes. you know, Talk about mental stability, right? There's a lot of people that have come my way. There's a lot of uh, interesting um, issues that I have faced. There's a lot of, um, you know, uh, hate that's come my way I, I here. Really? And, and I'm sure you have felt that as well in some way, shape or form. But, mm -hmm. you know, you have to be mentally strong, physically strong. In, in a good place to just keep moving forward because I yes. know what I'm doing mm -hmm. is good. I know Absolutely. what you're doing is good. And to me, that is something that when you know you're doing something good, your body is going to reflect from that as well as your mm. brain. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. It's interesting because my first um, guest, Rima, was also talking about this, you know, how the mind, the body, the heart, the soul, everything's interconnected. I know that you're a firm believer in this as well, because, you know, the marriage of fitness and, you know, holistic living, you know, and, you know, getting your body physically moving and just how the adrenaline makes you feel, right? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. So talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, the times that we're having right now, you know, mental health is on, on everyone's minds. We are having to deal with a lot of things in the world that we can't control and the impact that that's having on our lives and on our mental health. Um, how does Masala Bhangra and what you do and the philosophy of what that's all about, how can that, you know, help people with their mental health? Like draw a connection there for everyone out there because they got to come and check out your classes. And I want them to know why from this perspective that it's going to be really good for them. I'm going to, I'm going to take what you're saying and I'm going to expand it a little bit. And I'm going to say do it. Yeah. For, for those that are out there right now watching in, and if this can at all, you know, inspire you to do something different, to try something new, I encourage you to do that. One of the biggest things that I'm a big believer on is you, we have one life to live. And if anything, if this pandemic has taught us something, we, we get used to being in a circle of, you know, in a, in a cycle of things to do. We get comfortable in who we are, and what we do. And if I can encourage you to, you know, give me a chance, give some of my instructors a chance or give somebody else a chance that you've been wanting to try for a really long time, your health 
is really important. Movement is really important. Everybody knows this, but it's it's a matter of taking action now. And I'm just going to say, try to do something new. I know there's a lot of people that sit there and say, I don't want to do anything virtually. I don't feel it. I don't get into it. I know, I know, I get it. I, you know, even when I teach, sometimes I'm even like, are people even connecting? But mm. they are, and it's better than nothing. There's an article mm -hmm. that came out, I think in the Washington Post a few weeks ago that really did say, you know, these group exercise classes turned virtual has actually helped so many people stay committed to their health and to actually join in with another group that actually they see all these boxes. So we're not alone in doing Doing this, but it's really easy to cave into a, a, a shell and stay there. And I'm going to ask you to break out of that shell and just give somebody a chance to show you that um, meditation, yoga, movement, masala bhangra, you know, dance, fitness, something is is you got to give it a chance. It's better than nothing. This is what we have at the moment until things start opening up and that we can actually get back into it. But I, I, I hope that people out there who are watching this right now, you know, do give it a chance. It's really easy to sit back and put our feet up. And the amount of the amount of mental awareness cases that have gone up, it's it breaks my heart. The amount of obesity cases that have gone up, you know, it breaks my heart to see that as well as, but there's, I will preference by saying there's only, I can, I can sit here and I can talk all I want to I turn blue and say, please give everybody a chance. Mm -hmm. However, you watching out there have to shift your mind to say, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. It's a huge mind shift and it's just, you know, and then it's like everything else will open up. But you know, I love that you too. You I love that. You, I love your sharing this. And, I, I, and, you know, before we carry on, I just want to say one thing before I lose my train of thought. And is this, um, there's never been a time in human history where there is the potential of the entire world being able to be connected um, through, whether it be through dance, whether it be through learning, whether it be through you know, a skill that you want to um, understand. And there's never been a time where you can do that in a worldwide classroom. So I, you know, I honestly, I'm one of those people that, you know, for me, it's more of a challenge when you have to get me to go somewhere and, <laughs> and at a certain time, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, with how crazy my life is, is that, you know, the fact that, you know, you can have multiple different classes and you can pop in at different times of the day, right? And I just need to kind of flip into um, one of your classes for me is the best thing that could have ever happened. So even though, and, and, I, I, and I also do get that sense of energy from seeing all those boxes and seeing all those people joining in in your class, sweetheart. I mean, there's so much energy around it that I feel that I think that it would be crazy for people to not want to join these. And I, I mean that. So I know that from your perspective, because for so many years, you've been doing it where everyone's physically in a room. But think about it for a second. People from all over the world can join each other, right, and have an hour dedicated to making each other feel fabulous about their lives. What could be better than that? 100%. At first, you know, it actually, I, I have to give credit to some of my instructors. They're the ones that, one, one instructor in particular, she said, what are you doing? You know, you of all people need to get on this virtual land and let's go teach a class. And I just kept thinking, there were just so many elements, my children, husband, how are we gonna do this? Everyone is on top of each other 24 seven, how am I gonna do it? And she just kept poking me and saying, please start something. And I finally just said, let's do this. And mm. it was, I'm so glad she poked me, you know, to say, you know, even sometimes I need that motivation. And it has, people from around the world do chime in for the classes, people around the country have come in. And now it's changed so much where I will continue to do it. Uh, even when gyms do open up, even when facilities do open up, I will continue to do it because I just think it's brought in another side of a community where I'm so close to. I love my ladies and the few gentlemen that come to class and those little boxes do inspire me because they're right there doing it with me. Mm -hmm. And you know what's even amazing, Raj, is the fact yeah. that they show their camera. They're not perfect, everyone, but they're getting better and everyone's getting better and they're energies have uplifted they you know the cardiovascular system is getting better they're staying in shape right now it's it's maybe it is about losing weight or getting you know all that but right now it's a matter of 
finding sanity mm -hmm. and just just staying you know healthy in a way maybe it's not a time to lose weight but just to find something to keep you going to get to the next day and if it's that little box with a bunch of people that's coming in you know allow me allow me to go into your home and work out with you that's mm, that's my what god i, I love say. that i love that i love that and you know it's it's what is, i mean what is it about this whole idea of you know communal fitness and dancing right? What is it about that that you feel um, is, is, is the reason why you keep doing this? What I love about the communal feel is that everyone comes together and all walks of life. Everyone is coming in with a different, some different uh, circumstance that's happening in their life, but they all come together in that room, leave it at the door, maybe bring it in a little bit, it, it, it goes away after a while. In that hour of you actually listening to the music, feeling other people's energy, mm -hmm. it goes that way after a while. And then you sort of lose, you know, thought of, okay, what happened? I always tell people that, you know, give give exercise a chance, give uh, dance a, class, a chance, be, or do something a chance, allow yourself to go in with whatever may be happening. Allow yourself to just let go for that hour, because the thing is, the same problem is whatever your issue is you're not it's not going to get any better it will after time but in that hour i don't know if a lot is changing or not so i just mm -hmm. say you know well then allow to go yourself and do something different so that you can at least release some toxins some energy some you know some built up stress and then feel good for the next few hours and then go back to whatever may be happening in your life i so many people have come my way to say i'm going through a divorce i'm i just met someone the love of my life i um i I just broke up with my boyfriend. My father just passed away. My mother just some something or the other. Mm -hmm. And when people share their stories with me, you know, in that personal trusting way, it 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 has kept me going, because I I I love what I do. I love what I've created. I love what it does for people, and I love what it's done for this community. I'm proud to be celebrating 20 years. Yeah, it it is very emotional oh for me. <laughs> It's, it's emotional, emotional for me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I want to ask you for anyone out there that is um, excited or maybe even curious, um, how can they join your classes? Where do they need to go? They need to go to masalabangraworkout.com and then click on virtual classes. And then you can see the entire schedule there of the different classes that are being offered in the different countries around the world. Wow. I personally teach on Saturday mornings at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So quite a few people from around the world do join in for that class. Uh, it's a really simple way of uh, coming together. It's a nominal fee. Um, I, you know, I went from nine classes, my workshops traveling around the world to one class. <laughs> and That's it, okay. It, it's okay. It's great. And so it's a nominal fee, you know, that I, I ask and I think it's fair to ask. And I of think course. it's um I think it's just awesome that, you know, people can come together. It's really easy. Um, all the all the information is on the website, masalabhangraworkout.com, you know, uh, masalabhangra at gmail.com, easy to find. Of course, we're on all social media and I have a team of people that do answer all of those messages. Um, and yeah, I just, I would love, you know, love for someone to come and try it out and give it a chance. And, and Absolutely. See how it goes. Can I ask you something before we um, close out? Should um, I get a little close to you? Um, I mean, uh, you can get as close as you <laughs> like, my darling. You know, um, I would, um, I would, I would like some like hugs and cuddles after a year of no know, hugs and cuddles. You know, I know like I, know, I would love too. that. And I want to ask you um, if you didn't have, you know, this, you know, the fitness and the dancing and just this whole communal energy that you've dedicated your life to, you know, what would you be doing? I'm so curious. I'm asking you this question because you've dedicated your life to this. This is not just something that, you know, someone's done for five years where, you know, the question isn't as powerful. You, you're like me, you've dedicated your life to your community. What would you do if this wasn't what you were doing? Oh my God, I, I actually want to cry to that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, as I'm sitting here, I really, I, I am getting teary eyed because I, I don't know. 
I, okay, I, I love I mean, that there's, answer. There's, there's so many things that I love to do, you know, and I, I do on the side. Um, I do, I do it on the side and it keeps me going. But it, this, this is, I, I remember when I met my husband, um, you know, I had said to him that I, I'm going to keep doing Masala Bhangra and I will need your support. And my, it's, my life is up and down. There's, it's not a nine to five. It's all over the place. And if you're able to support me, then let's go on this journey together. Mm -hmm. And he was the only man that, you know, had the guts to get down on one knee and say, you know, let's do this. Wow. And when I think of that, I just, mm -hmm. I keep going. I love what I do. Raj, that's a great question. I don't know. I was, I, I found my calling many years ago and I'm still doing it. A lot of people have said, aren't you bored of this? Aren't you too old now to do this? I don't know. I don't think we're too, ever too old to exercise. I don't think we're ever too old to dance. Right. I don't think, I don't think we're ever too old to keep moving. And what an inappropriate question to ask you. Like, <laughs> That's just such an inappropriate you know, question. It's all good, you know, people, people. <laughs> but that's okay. It's all good, yeah. It's all good. But um so what, what just, just even just even talking to you, you know, like I get energized knowing that, oh my God, somebody's gonna come and experience Masala Bhangra. Oh my right, absolutely. And they should. Everyone out there in the world should definitely <clears throat> um, you know, experience this because what makes you feel better than you know, dancing and getting fit? Like what's better than that? And doing it with a whole bunch of people that love doing it. It's just, this is the closest you're gonna get to being in a, you know, in a party or a wedding or a club or wherever it is that people go to dance. This is about the closest that you're gonna get to that same feeling of adrenaline. So you need to tap into that is what I have to say. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you'd be surprised a lot of people do say to me, you know, that um, a lot of people do say to me that, wow, this was a lot harder than I thought. I'm like, yeah, I mean, we're going for one hour straight, you know, uh, you know, I keep you moving through this move called basic and I keep, you know, we, we just keep doing that. And so absolutely. I mean, it's, a, it's much harder. It's cardiovascularly. I am going to kick your butt in a good way, <laughs> in, in a good, in a good way though, in a good way. I love that. Um, any final um, words that you have for the audience, um, Sabina, regarding, um, you know, your experience with times that maybe you feel, you know, heavy and, and down and stressed and anxiety, like any words of wisdom and advice that you have for people out there, because everyone's going through a lot right now that they can't control. I would, I, I, I'm right there with you. Um, I know we all are in this together and we have to stay strong for one another to everyone out there, everybody. You know, it doesn't matter your mom or dad, single, married, you know, everyone is just going through their own internal, oh my God, when are, when are we going to get out of this? So please stay strong for you, yourself and your community, your loved ones around you, because that strength is needed and we're almost there. And also um, to, to, to just make sure that you check in with yourself and make sure you're okay and talk about it with somebody, you know, with whatever you're going through, it's best to communicate with your close, you know, your closest people around you. So they also are aware of what is going on and they can support you in, in any way, shape or form. And to also just stay mentally healthy, please. It is, you know, there's no other, there's no other choice. Your life is one and it matters. Really, it does. It matters to everyone around you. It really does matter. And on that note, I don't think I could have um, wrapped up this show any better than that. Serena, I absolutely adore you. I respect you. I have a lot of love for you and a, a lot of admiration for you because there's, very, there's only very few people I think that I know, and I know a lot of people who have been able to keep something going and keeping their passion um, you know, and their mission the same as it was when they started for three decades, girl. I met you um, when you were 10 years in. Yes. 20 years I ago. I remember. That's insane. I remember. I remember. Yes, I remember. We had uh, fab fabulous conversations. Yes, we again. have. We have. We've met each other so many times. And, you know, folks, please go out there and um, support Masala Bhangra. It's been around for um, as long as it has. And um, it's, you know, it's accessible to you from anywhere around the world. There are so many different instructors. So you can find who you like, 
right? And um, feel good about yourself. You owe it to yourself to make your body feel alive and, and make your mind and your heart and your soul sing while you dance honestly and and what better way than to do it with masala bhangra which i absolutely love and this is the founder and creator of that organization i am so proud of you sweetheart and and i think that we we need to actually do some sort of a class together on anoki we're going to figure that out okay we will for sure fantastic Needs to happen thank you yeah. my darling adore you Mwah. thank you so much